Um, I'm Shana Tully, Dr. Shana Tully from Align Modern Health. Nice to see you all here. Um, today we're going to talk about stress, basically what it is, what, what it does to your body. Let's go to the next slide. At Aligned, we uh, practice integrative medicine, specializing in that, and uh, it essentially means a team approach to your health concerns. So integrative medicine also means that we have practitioners of different perspectives that are um, within holistic medicine to look at you as a whole person. So we're trying to get to the root cause of your disease and we recognize that no one discipline has cornered the market on truth. Um, so each discipline in our system has something to contribute to your health and your concerns. So we've got chiropractic physical medicine, working on your musculoskeletal complaints, but also preventing things like pregnancy pain um, and helping you work on your athletic performance or optimizing your performance. Um, with uh, clinical massage therapy, we are working on you know, soft tissue complaints and stress and headaches. We know that we'll talk about this in a couple of slides, but that actual touch will enhance your body's secretion of oxytocin, which helps with um, your relaxation response. And I think we all know that intrinsically. Um, with acupuncture, which is what I do at, at Align Modern Health, the system of primary care out of Asia, the East Asia, that seems to bring the body back into balance. So we use acupuncture, herbal medicine, qigong, and body work modalities. Um, note that the WHO, or the World Health Organization, approves acupuncture based on the science for many conditions on top of pain, including psychiatric disorders, especially anxiety and depression. Um, but also gynecological disorders, male hormone imbalances, um, also signs of symptoms of cancer uh, related to chemotherapy treatment and radiation treatment, um, fatigue, sleeplessness, insomnia, or all stress-related disorders that acupuncture is great at treating. Um, and did you know that acupuncturists, on top of their education in biomedicine, Chinese medicine, also often have um, an additional 700 hours in training in herbal medicine. So super qualified there. We must have like 2000 hours of education in uh, all of the modalities and such. Um, so, and when we're talking about more internal medicine disorders, which herbs are often applied, um, we're often coordinating care with functional medicine and clinical nutrition um, for all sorts of uh, disorders. Go to the next slide. So um, I work at the Align Modern Health location in Southport. And um, oh, okay, I need to talk louder. And I also am a professor, just adjunct one class a semester, either teaching East West Nutrition or Herbs 3 at Pacific College of Health and Science. I have a doctorate in acupuncture and Chinese medicine, as well as an additional diplomate in Chinese medicine and dermatology, where we basically learn to treat disorders like psoriasis and eczema with herbal formulas. Although you can use acupuncture really well for things like shingles, as long as you come in soon enough. I have to come in really early for that. Um, and then I have an additional uh, vocational, uh, about three-year diplomate in um, Western herbal medicine, aromatherapy, flower essences, and clinical nutrition. I did that before I went to, to acupuncture school. So in terms of stress, you know it's a normal physiological response to events that make you feel threatened or upset your internal homeostasis or balance in some way. So the term stress is short for distress, which basically is um, a Latin word that means to like pull apart, but essentially these sort of messages that come from your brain that tell your body that you are under distress. And upon experience of this distress, there is a whole cascade of neurotransmitters, which we call the molecules of emotions, right? That occurs. So when you sense danger, whether it is real or imagined danger, your body's defenses kick into high gear. 
and your sympathetic nervous system, which is now uh, not just fight or flight, but also freeze. You think of like, you know, those lizards that change in camouflage, they're doing kind of a freeze uh, type of stress response. So your body's revving up to take action of some sort. Um, and so um, your adrenal secretes stress hormones, namely cortisol. Um, when stressors are constant rather than intermittent, uh, we never return to the relaxation phase. Um, so the idea, you know, even like in anatomy and physiology, I was taught that we were like running from this knife wielding bear, which was a hilarious way to memorize it, right? So when we're doing that, like, you know, all of our resources are geared to keep us safe from danger. And we're not designed to do things like stop and eat or sleep or any of those things. Um, and so when you're also secreting all of that cortisol, your body will then, it will trigger your body's release of adrenaline, right? So it basically is the, it signals the conversion of what's called norepinephrine into adrenaline. So our body does not distinguish between real and perceived threats. Um, so either bad stress or good stress are experienced in the same way physiologically. You have this sort of hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis that's just misfiring, giving the wrong signals chronically over time. And there are the right signals to run away from a knife wielding bear, but the wrong signals for sleep and relaxation and eating, like we were saying. Um, so yeah, in terms of like real or perceived threats, like your body doesn't know the difference between getting married, which would be like a great, uh, awesome type of stress or versus your boss yelling at you. Um, so, and ultimately stress was designed to be an on or off event. So it was not designed to deal with chronic stress. So it impacts the body in all sorts of negative ways. Um, mentally, emotionally, physically. So recognizing the symptoms of stress is a really helpful way to already start working on circumventing the negative impact it will have on your physical body. It's sort of funny where like we, oh, we have a body. We don't just like, you know, go to work, be a mom, all of these like personal roles that we are, we actually have to like recognize that our body requires our attention and upkeep. So skin disorders that would also be um, corresponding to stress would be like acne or dermatitis, like itching. Dermatitis can be a type of eczema, rashes. The pancreas is impacted by stress because cortisol is what's known as a glucocorticoid. So it impacts the regulation of sugar, so gluco, right? And another thing that not just elevated secretions of insulin, but people that are hypoglycemic, if they don't eat, that will cause a whole cascade of secretion of cortisol to adrenaline as well. So keeping your body fed can actually improve your overall stress response. Um, reproductive system will be impacted because usually you don't want to reproduce when you're running from a knife wielding bear. Um, definitely a risk for reduced fertility. Um, before we talk about joints and muscles, we should also talk about the serotonin, the neurotransmitter serotonin. So that one is utilized by the body to lessen the impact that stress has on us physically. It acts like a, a stress buffer. So however, like men have actually evolved to have about 75% more serotonin in their system than women. So that if you look at chronic pain disorders, a chronic inflammation, like fibromyalgia, 75 to 90% of diagnosed fibromyalgia cases are women. So, um, <clears throat> so that there's something to be said for that, just looking at the serotonin connection between joint muscles and pain, as well as looking at headache, sleep problems, fatigue, anxiety. These are all also can be serotonin mediated disorders and more commonly experienced by women, especially given the impact and the level of expectations we have on women in our modern culture in terms of caretaking and high levels of stress in that regard. Um, 
especially too, as women age, um, as hormone levels fall, hormones and serotonin are like two cars on a roller coaster. So if the hormones are falling, the serotonin is going to follow. So that's also why we kind of have crying spells with PMS. So that also like, as you go in age into menopause, you're going to have more of these disorders. Um, and then heart, that's kind of intuitive. You have chest pain when you have panic attacks. Digestion, just so you know that adrenaline, when it's increased, is actually designed to evacuate the bowels. So that kind of stress uh, response that you have, like during a test, for example, and you suddenly have to like run to the bathroom. It's not the most convenient thing. Also, like when you're on a job interview, but you already kind of intrinsically know this, right? That you have these stress responses um, in your digestion. And then also sometimes it impacts the immune system where you're seeing like this chronic inflammation we see with fibromyalgia or just something as simple as um, increased colds and flus. Go to the next slide. So the result of chronic constant stress leads to these disorders. So while we know that stress can cause things like increased blood pressure, muscle tension, middle body weight gain, et cetera, um, we also know that eventually over time, it's gonna increase fatigue, depression, digestive disorders, hormone imbalances. So they kind of go together, pain and discomfort, insomnia, et cetera. So the ways that you would want to increase your ability to deal with stress, or there's just a couple like lifestyle things that you can do, whether it's um, deep breathing, like just taking three deep breaths, or usually this nice little breathing exercise where you do four counts inhaling, seven counts holding the breath, and then eight counts out can be really powerful. And even if you have trouble holding your breath for that seven counts, you could actually just do the inhale of four and the exhale of eight. Either way is fine. It actually works really well to click back on that rest and digest phase of the nervous system. Um, in terms of meditation and mindfulness practice, 10 minutes every day may seem like too much or too little, depending on you. Um, sometimes I just have people like, there's this idea of Kaizen by behavioral change. So Kaizen is this uh, discipline from Japan where they actually like set the bar like super low so that, you know, say 10 minutes sounds like too much. So we just say do a minute or three minutes. And then, you know, usually once you're in the habit, you can actually um, get there. Or like say you set out your meditation supplies, but you don't do it. So that would be, that's like a Kaizen way to try to get the behavior change to start. Cause you just take the obstacles out of, out of the way. Um, limiting or eliminating alcohol or caffeine. So as we age, alcohol can become increasingly difficult to detoxify. Um, you know, it is a toxin, unfortunately. So that can lead to insomnia. Um, some people might not even be genetically inclined to detoxify all that well. Um, alcohol can cause, as a result, getting trouble getting to sleep or staying to sleep. Um, some folks will have increased incidences of panic attacks, especially the day after drinking. I just saw somebody with that. Um, caffeine consumption. I don't necessarily think caffeine or coffee is evil. I'm, I'm a fan of caffeine. It makes me you know, awake in the morning. Um, but in excess, it can be a problem. It can definitely increase your stress response. It can make you more anxious. So limiting or eliminating caffeine, if that's the case for you, you know, sometimes staying in that sweet spot, I started managing my own by just keeping my caffeine intake below 120 milligrams a day. So for some people that, that bar might be a little higher. It's just some people have poor ability to detoxify caffeine genetically. Um, yeah, sleep is super important. If you are able to sleep, if you can't sleep, like, please come see us. Um, yeah, because if you're not sleeping, then, you know, your ability to cope with stress is very much declined. 
um, exercise, you know, even if it's like a low bar of like walking, you know, every day or just keeping moving, you know, 30 minutes, three times a week. Um, and then uh, keeping a journal whoops, and incorporating yoga. So like talking about the difference between different types of yoga, like if you kind of use yoga as a workout, like an intense workout, then that kind of fits more in the category of exercise. Whereas if we're talking about yoga as stress relief, we're more thinking about like a restorative form of yoga or meditative forms like yoga nidra, that kind of thing is, is a bit more effective in dealing with the stress response. In Chinese medicine and, and East Asian culture, qigong plays an important role in dealing with stress and preventing um, aging, like really helping with um, overall healthy aging. Um, we're really working on, and including Tai Chi as well, there's therapeutic exercises to maintain and boost up your ability to stay rooted in the moment. So like a lot of focus on leg strength, actually, and really building up the level of energy and um, Chi in the legs so that you're more capable of staying grounded in the midst of difficult times. Um, incorporating some calming supplements. So lots of press on adaptogens, which I can get into. I could probably teach a whole class on adaptogens. However, um, the herbs that I think often get overlooked in the case of stress management are nervines. So nervines improve nervous system tone. So the flight, the flight, I can't say it, <laughs> flight or fight or freeze response is actually less likely to be switched on. So nervines work on that on off switch. Um, herbs in that category would be something as simple as chamomile, passion flower, skull cap, lavender, California poppy. And what's important is not just occasionally using them when you feel stressed, but actually if you want to work on that on off switch, you actually need to use them daily and in, in an in a significant dose. So chamomile tea in a tiny little tea bag is not a significant dose. If you're really trying to make an impact by using chamomile medicinally, you'll need about three of your standard tea bags and you'll need to steep it 15 minutes and using it daily. If you notice also chamomile is very important for um, digestive dysfunction in combination with stress, but it needs to be strong and it needs to be every day. Um, and then we can talk about acupuncture and acupressure for stress. So we have a bunch of slides on that. So we'll go to the next slide. So acupuncture in Chinese medicine is a patient-centered as opposed to disease-centered approach to health that focuses on identifying the root cause of health challenges and treats them to restore balance in the body. So for this reason, because it's person-centered, there are multiple approaches for treating different patients for the same Western disease. So it's not just like a procedure, it's not just a cookbook approach, like a doctor diagnoses you with anxiety and that means I always use the same points. That's not the case. Different people manifest uh, anxiety differently from the perspective of Chinese medicine. So I'm gonna use different points for different people who all are diagnosed with anxiety, okay? Um, there are a couple of like just, you know, general calming points that we'll go over today, but, but oftentimes I have to treat the whole person, right? Um, so that's why we have to do an intake and um, we got to get the whole picture first before we start inserting needles and giving you herbs. Um, acupuncture points are areas of measurable lower electrical resistance. Um, you actually kind of learn to palpate that when you're in school. They're also thought of as gates and like literally translated as gates of entry into the nervous system of the fascia. And there's actually really cool new science on the nervous system conduction within the connective tissue. So we know that acupuncture promotes blood flow, stimulates the body's built-in healing mechanisms, reduces pain and inflammation, and reduces stress. Um, but, you know, there's all sorts of you know, deep level science on acupuncture and Chinese medicine. If you want to know more about the biological mechanisms. Um, you can even start with um, the WHO or the World Health Organization's paper on 
the use of acupuncture. They have a really nice review. So an acupuncture needle is pretty small. Um, you can see it compared with a matchstick or a medical syringe or a sewing needle. So you can fit about 26 acupuncture needles within a medical syringe. They're typically smaller and, than a cat whisker and they are very flexible um, and often lubricated as well so that they're not uncomfortable upon insertion. So we know, like we were saying earlier, that acupuncture helps release oxytocin, which is part of why people feel so much better. And it helps to bring on that parasympathetic rest and digest or calm and connect system. So it is in a way the opposite of the, the uh, fight or flight response. Um, other things that can actually raise oxytocin would be um, touch, like we were saying, massage, hugs, pets. Um, sometimes pets can increase your stress response, as we saw earlier. Um, you know, so I think a lot of people have been under deep stress, especially people that live alone during COVID, because they really haven't had anybody to touch them. Some of my single patients will come in and they'd be like, you're the only person that's touched me for months. So it's been a hard time. Um, and then also just why we're going to get into the ear, the ear in or auricular therapy is particularly effective for mental emotional disorders. Um, it's right, it goes right to the brain, brain stem especially. Um, we know that it raises endorphins, it improves nerve system tone like we were talking about with the nervine herbs. And then it also helps prevent the nervous system cascade that makes adrenaline, right? So there are a couple of auricular points that we use for treating stress and anxiety. Um, there's actually quite a few. Um, I have a little model of an ear and you can see how many points there actually are on the ear. <laughs> there's so many, it's a lot, right? So we're just giving you four because we don't want you to have that overwhelm that all of our acupuncture students experience. And, um, the other thing is, I was going to show you what an ear seed looks like. Looks like my cat stole them. Oh well. Well, basically, we have a couple of different ideas or um, models of ear seeds. We sell some on the online store on our website, and we actually made sure that it was like the really good ones. Um, so there are herb seeds like the ones I have here, which I would be showing you if they hadn't been stolen by my cat. Um, <laughs> that is basically literally a seed that we use in Chinese medicine to move energy, to move chi, especially in the digestion. Um, and it, it gets put on the points to stimulate the points with a piece of tape or Band-Aid. Um, and you just press on those to help stimulate the point as well which is a really great thing for people that have like a nervous twitch that they need to redirect. Maybe they're biting their nails or they're, you know, scratching themselves and picking scabs and stuff. You know, just having a redirect onto the ear is a really good thing. Um, so the, the ear seeds that we have online are, um, first of all, they have really sticky tape, so they stay on forever. Um, and then they are also gold or, plate, gold or silver plated seeds. Um, which will exert an effect even without you pressing on them because the, the uh, metals have a medicinal effect. Um, so usually with the silver, we're using that to sedate or clear. Um, and it's really great for that first point for calming the mind. Um, I use it all the time in my patients. Whereas like a gold ear seed is used to like add resources to a point if something is in the body is like just lacking and deficient uh, or weak, then we use the gold. Um, yeah, so with the gold or the silver, it's just a more nuanced treatment than the, the seed, the actual seed. Um, so Shenmen, Shenmen is um, spirit gate. It's used to calm the mind. And um, it is, like I said, really great for using the silver ear seed and um, super important for anxiety and stress um, and insomnia, actually. Like 
trouble getting to sleep is, um, is a really good one for silver. Because um, we differentiate between types of sleep and types of stress. Um, and then liver. Um, liver is really important for helping manage or regulate the emotions. Um, it's very often excessive when there's a lot of stress. So when there's like a lot of state of frustration, anger, or even rage, silver is used in this instance right there at the liver point. And then um, down here on the spleen point, that would be more like worrying or OCD kind of thinking, or your just brain is going round and round and round. But also like if you have digestive stress, like, or you get lots of colds and flus, um, if you're the kind of person that gets uh, a lot of diarrhea all the time, then you would use a gold ear seed in this, uh, in this point. Um, if you are just an old worrier and overthinker, then you would use a silver. Um, the lung point is really good for people that can't get a deep breath in, like they're doing a lot of chest breathing because they're stressed, not diaphragmatic or belly breathing. Um, so this would be a really good point with like silver seeds, especially to the lung plays an important role in Chinese medicine for sleep um, when there's a heat issue. Um, but if you have a long history of asthma, um, childhood history of asthma, then a gold ear seed would be indicated here. Um, so that's pretty much it for the ear seeds. I did actually find them. So this would be my little set of ear seeds I have at home. And they're on a piece of tape. And yeah. So you just take your piece of tape with your ear seed and then you just apply it to your ear. Usually I'm, if I do this on myself, which I do a lot, I just stick it on in front of a mirror. So there we go. My cat didn't steal them. They were under my phone. All right. So yeah, so now I'm just using that to press on it. And you know, the tape actually does hold it on the point. So you do get somewhat of an effect. Um, thanks for coming. And um, we're gonna open this up to Q&A now. Um, if there's anything that came up that's a more in-depth type of question, just schedule a free 15 minute consult by calling us or going to our website. Um, I'm glad you all could come. So. Um, it should be relatively close. The points that we chose for, um, okay, so I'm answering one of the questions. How close to the point do you need to get the seed? Um, so the answer to that is you need to get relatively close to the point, but the points that I chose for today's demo are a, a pretty big area. So like, um, that would be like right there. So it's pretty big. It's this whole corner of the triangular fossa. There's a little depression right here, and then it's right in the corner. There you go. And, um, and then I guess, okay, there's another question. Okay, let me get to that question. Yeah, I can go over the three, seven, eight breathing. Let me finish actually um, going over those different points on this ear model too, though. Because you can see here, like this whole area is liver, and then this whole area on the side is spleen, and then lung actually has two spots. So it's right there and there. So it's hard to see it with my finger, but there and there in the cavern. Does that? So to that and um so the breathing exercise if you want to do it with me i just wanted to make sure we had enough time for it is um yeah four seven eight so you're gonna breathe in four counts so you can do it with me so breathe in one two three four and then hold it two three four 
five, six, seven, and then breathe out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like people to do it at least three times. If not, if you can do 10. Um, when I had a particularly stressful job at North Shore, I used to do it at the stoplights on my way, on my way to work. Um, so I think that is a great way just to, as long as you have like a trigger, like, okay, every time I'm at a, I'm at a stoplight, I do this breathing or, you know, after I brush my teeth or anything like that. Um, yeah, if you treat the spleen and the liver and the lung, it will help with, actually all four points are great for skin conditions, honestly, is the, like the Sue Wen said, all pain sore and all pain sores and itch come from the heart. So if you treat that ear shen men point on the top, that'll treat the heart. So um, you gotta treat digestion usually with, uh, with skin conditions as well as liver. And then in Chinese medicine, the lung controls the skin. So yeah probably why I intuitively picked those four points because I do dermatology. So, all right. Well, I think that was all the questions we had. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. And that question was actually do the, um, do these points treat skin conditions? And the answer is yes. They actually do treat skin conditions really well. Um, but oftentimes you have to use herbs because actually in China, like besides shingles, yeah, usually it's herbs for skin conditions. Does the body naturally recognize the difference between stress and anxiety? Well, it doesn't really recognize the difference between good stress versus bad stress. So anxiety and stress sometimes are the same thing, um, as well as like low serotonin levels we know will um, perpetuate anxiety, right? So if you don't have enough serotonin, your stress buffer, then you can't actually deal with stresses very well and you will have anxiety as a result. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, I think that's that's all we had for the questions. We got every everything answered. Um, yeah, so if you have anything that's like a more personalized questions, oh, here's a new one <laughs> in the chat box. How long should the ear seeds be in as long as you want to keep them there? You know, like a cheaper ear seed, like the ones they had us buy in school that I have here in my, at my house, these are terrible. They didn't stay on very long at all. Well, I think a lot of the adhesive had died. You know, so it just depends on how sticky the adhesive is. Um, the ones that we saw on the website are very sticky and I've seen them stay in people's ears for two to three weeks. Um, so I've been impressed by those. Whereas the cheaper the adhesive, the less likely they can stay. I also tell people um, if, if they're annoying you, then you should take them out. Like sometimes it's leaving like a little indent or an irritation or dermatitis. Yeah, we do use ear seeds for maintenance if you can't get in um, often. Um, you know, it's like a way to carry the treatment over to the next, um, to the next, next visit. This is also the same for herbs. Um, well, you know, in terms of which one to pick, uh, how do you know if you should get silver or gold ear seeds? Silver is usually a great place to start. Um, just because most people need that level of sedation uh, just to kind of get through their day. Uh, I don't know, because they are like silver or gold plated, they tend to be a little bit more pricey than the standard, um, but it is on our website. Forgot to check how much they are. I know that my boss complains <laughs> that they're expensive. Um, yeah, so thank you all for coming, and um, 
I really appreciate your questions and your time spent with us today. I hope you have a great day um, and take care.